Hey there once again YouTube, how you guys doing today? I got a few things to bring to your attention today about Hawaii and Oklahoma, yes. Oklahoma saw a magnitude 4.0 last night, downgraded to a magnitude 3.8. About half the times that they downgrade earthquakes, I agree with them. Half the times that they upgrade earthquakes, I agree with them. But, I don't know if you can hear in the background my son's screaming again for because he's taking a nap. <laughs> he hates naps. Um, but moving on, I do think this magnitude 3.8 should have been labeled a 4.0, at least in my opinion. So I think the downgrade was a little premature. And so we're going to take a look at that in just a second. However, I want to let you guys know on my website, I am updating a lot of stuff. I am adding some new pages to the how-to drop-down menu that are not completed yet. So if you see any new pages that aren't completed, don't worry, I'll get to it. These should be done within the next week or so. Um, I'm trying to make navigation a lot easier and a lot better for new people to my website. So you might see a lot of things change, but I'm not deleting any pages. For To get to my seismic blogs, for example, the Yellowstone blog or the Hawaii blog or the seismic blog, just go to seismic blogs, drop down menu right here. And I have the three most important ones in the beginning right here. Seismic events, I still have the normal seismic event pages right down here. I might move these around a little bit because there's one blog I forgot to put over in seismic blogs. So just keep an eye out. I am changing a few things on this website, but don't worry, it won't change that much. Again, monitorsize.net. It's a really good tool for you guys to learn how to access and analyze seismic data, how to find all those seismic stations out there, and how to do a bunch of different stuff, and even shows thousands of plots generated by myself to show you examples, especially in event examples. This is a really good page right here, showing you examples of pretty much every single type of seismic event that can occur and what they look like. So, moving on. I know I usually don't do this because I focus on earthquake activity, but just heads up, uh, AMSmeteors.org reported a very large fireball over Connecticut, basically the entire eastern coast, last night around 11 p.m. or so. Over 361 people reported to AMS Meteors that they saw the fireball, which is a lot of people, guys, because not that many people come to this website or even know about it, guys. So it is pretty interesting, uh, definitely. And then there was another fireball in Hawaii. Look at this. Four people reported seeing a very bright fireball in Hawaii heading. Look at the arrow. This is the arrow from where they saw it. Now, we had four people report in. Three people, maybe. No, no, four people. Two were right here. One was right here. One was right here. The direction of the meteor was going this way, direction of the fireball, right towards Kilauea. Wouldn't it be funny if it landed in the volcano? That would be kind of funny. Uh, but yeah, so meteors are going crazy lately. Here's some footage of the meteor over Connecticut. Surveillance cameras and the here is some footage here. The night sky this happening just after 11 o'clock last night. And we posted Look at that. a video on our Facebook page. We heard from a lot of you who also spotted it as well. Eric Ritchie is more live in our breaking news center. Ah, uh, it's a little laggy. Really Sorry, guys. Hold on. In response, Travis Roberts posted it, saying he captured the nightlight show on his backyard. It's a little bit of fragmentation camera. for that and meteor. Comments kept on coming on Facebook from people all across Lasted the almost three and seconds or so. That was a pretty a impressive fireball, guys. A lot of people saw it. The sky. Very, very impressive. So if you guys saw that fireball on the East Coast, please leave a comment in, uh, in the comment section below and let me know if you saw it. Now, first off, we're going to go to Hawaii and we're going to talk about Oklahoma in Hawaii. Just recently, in the past hour, they had a magnitude 1.8 at Kilauea Summit and a magnitude 2.4, just very shallow, just right under the summit of Mauna Loa. Mauna Loa is about 4.1 kilometers above sea level, so this still occurred underground, obviously. Um, but thing is, is negative magnitudes, or excuse me, negative depths are not always 100% constrained correctly, as I have seen in the past, but I believe this is correct, just right under the summit. And then earlier, we had a magnitude 3.1, which was felt by some people, and it was near the Mauna Loa summit, but farther down the southwest rift zone, just barely. Two people reported feeling it all the way down south in the southern tip of the Big Island of Hawaii. And earlier, we saw a magnitude 3.0 near Pu'u'u'u. -oh. Let's zoom in and see the exact location of this 3.0. It's been a while since we see two three magnitude 3 events in one day for Hawaii, so... It does look like seismicity could be starting to increase the Big Island. Again, uplift continues for the Mauna Loa Summit, the Kilauea Summit, and the Kilauea East Rift Zone as well. Zooming in, we can see that this magnitude 3.0 down here was very close to Pu'u'u'u, which is right about here. It's up in this location, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. 
So it was just to the southwest, I believe, of Pu'uo'o. Uh, but uplift is occurring here as well. Then we had two again near the Kilauea summit, but just barely to the west. And then up here, Mauna Loa saw five reported events. Remember, HVO's website, if you go to volcanoes.usgs.gov, go to the website, click the monitoring tab, and look at the data for the past week, past six months, so on and so forth. They report more earthquakes on there. Not on the, I'm not talking about the earthquake map on volcanoes.usgs.gov. I'm talking about their monitoring data tab. They, uh, in the data, here, I'll show you, I'll show you. It's easier to just show you. Here we are at volcanoes.usgs.gov slash volcanoes at Mauna Loa, the current alert stay, status. Um, we're going to go to monitoring. Don't click monitoring itself, just click the tab. Notice it says deformation data. Data past week, data past month, data past year. We're going to go to data past week. And look at how many more. Okay, so they show 67 earthquakes in the past seven days. See that? 67 earthquakes located in the past seven days. That's very intriguing. Want to know why? For the past seven days for the entire big island of Hawaii, they're reporting 91. But if you zoom into Mauna Loa, it might take a second, guys. Sorry, my computer's a little slow today. But if you zoom into Mauna Loa itself, you will see... Let me try to get everything off screen so it's just Mauna Loa. You'll see... Come on, buddy. Is it going to change? You'll see about 21. Notice 21. Everything within the map frame is shown. So about 21 or whoops, or about 17, actually, in the past seven days of all magnitudes. But you go to volcanoes.usgs.gov on their monitoring data past week, and they show 67. So for some reason, they are showing a lot more earthquakes on this website than basically any other earthquake data center at all. I don't know why. I don't know. But we're going to go to one day all magnitudes, hopefully if it'll let me. Come on, buddy. So we're going to take a look at the seismic data for TRAD, which resides right here, and take a look at the earthquakes that occurred at Mauna Loa. But first, here's the Volcanoes to USGS earthquake map. We're going to go to TRAD right here. Come on, buddy. My goodness, there we go. You can see the past 24 hours, there has been an increase in seismicity versus the past week or so. So it's very intriguing. Let's go to closer to the Lower East Rift Zone. And you could tell that definitely we had three popping off the other just about 24 hours ago. Three popping off within just a few minutes of each other. So a lot of earthquakes, guys. A lot of earthquakes around the Big Island of Hawaii, primarily in Mauna Loa and the East Rift Zone. Here we are in the seismic program swarm with station TRAD in the HB network. Dash, dash, location okay, code because none of these given and short period vertical. We could see a lot of these earthquakes just in the past 24 hours worth of data. As of 12.06 p.m. Pacific Time, July 25th, 2019. We see two occurring right there in close succession. And we see another one right there, another one right there. And the magnitude 3.1. Let's see, when did the 3.1 occur? Let's see here. 3.1 occurred 12.38 UTC. 12.38 UTC. So that would be all the way down here. And here's the magnitude 3.1 at the Mauna Loa Summit right here. Very strange P wave arrival. By the way, we have not seen any spasmodic tremor events at all since July 22nd. So it's been about three days, but we are seeing an increase in seismicity. And earthquakes do continue within the Mantle Plume Conduit, um, showing epicenters being reported every now and then near Pahala, Hawaii. And they're pretty deep still. So no spasmodic tremor, but we do have earthquakes occurring within that area. As of the most recent data, we do see an earthquake right here. Some dominant lower frequencies could be a little bit farther away from this station in question. Another earthquake right here. Very small. So you could definitely see earthquake activity could be increasing. I'm going to take a quick look at this magnitude 3.0, somewhat near Pu'uo'o, which occurred at 6.2 kilometers in depth on at 3 UTC on July 5th. I'm going to take a look at the event page real quick, see what the closest seismic station is to this event. Only one pe person reported feeling it. Not too surprising. 3.0 isn't that strong, but it's two threes in one day is something we haven't seen for a little while in Hawaii. Closest seismic station would be STCD in the HV network. Let's take a look at that now in Swarm. Here we have STCD in the HV network. Dash dash location code, broadband vertical. Since it's a broadband channel, I did add a one hertz high pass filter to the fifth power, or excuse me, to the eighth power. Notice we have the earthquake right here at about 3 UTC on July 25th. This is the magnitude 3.0 near Pu'uo'o. Very interesting type of earthquake. Downwards going P-wave on the station showing, what was it, dilatation? I believe that is what it's showing. 
And we do have some other quakes in the area. This, I believe, oh yeah, 1239. This is the magnitude 3.1 near Mauna Loa. Yes, it was that strong to be detected that far away. Remember, seismic stations can detect earthquakes very, very far from the epicenter. So now let's move on to the main course of this video. You will notice small magnitude seismicity occurring as part of ongoing earthquake swarms and aftershocks in the Cirrus Valley, Coastal Volcanic Field, and Ridgecrest area is still going on in this area. In my last video, I did show GPS station CCCC, which resides right at Ridge, Ridgecrest, and it was showing ongoing trend of uplift in the area. Yes, there is currently uplift going on near the Ridgecrest area. I don't know how long it will last or if it will lead to anything, but I definitely thought that was very, 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 very intriguing. Actually caught me off guard when I first saw it. But that's not what I wanted to talk about today. Notice there have been 36 reported earthquakes for Oklahoma in the past 24 hours of all magnitudes. Now you'll notice, let's go down here. Now there are two central locations where these earthquakes are occurring. Of course we see some earthquakes up to the northwest. But most of these earthquakes are occurring near Kingfisher and Okini, Okine, Okini and Hennessy, Oklahoma, right in this location here. And notice we have two spots of seismicity just to the north and just to the south, almost perfectly north and south from each other. Notice how it started with a 3.2. Boom! That is where it looks like all of this started. We had a 1.7, 1.8, 1.7, and then boom! We had a 3.3 up to the north, and then another 3.0 in the north as well. Going forward, going forward, we see multiple uh, small twos to mid-range twos popping off. A lot of them are near 6 kilometers in depth, 7 kilometers in depth, and then last night, boom, we had a magnitude 4.0 downgraded to a magnitude 3.8. Looking at the data, I do think it was a 4.0. Sometimes I do agree with some of the downgrades that USGS does, but this one, no, I think it was a 4.0, at least in my opinion, but who gives a crap about 0.2 when we have the amplitude count to go on, right? So uh, it was at 6.5 kilometers in depth, and it was downgraded to a 3.8, so... Notice there were many, many four shocks leading up to this magnitude 3.8. Or was the 3.8 even the main shock? Because we see a 3.2 and a 3.3 and a 3.0 going up. We see a 3.8, of course, last night. Then we see a 2.7 supposed aftershock. 1.6, 2.0, 2.5, 1.9, 2.0, and then a 3.3 and a 1.8, 2.4, 2.4, 2.0, 2.3, 2.4, and a 3.4. Okay, so it is very possible that these are not aftershocks after the 3.8 last night. It is very possible that these all are foreshocks to a coming larger quake. It could easily peter out and not go anywhere. But I'm just putting a warning out for the next few days. You know, I'm not trying to forecast earthquakes or anything, but just looking at how this seismicity is going, just in case... If you live near this area, just be prepared for a possible magnitude 5 or magnitude 6 in the next few days. Just keep an eye out for that. Just putting out a warning, just in case. After all, it's better to be prepared than sorry. Okay, so, and really, there has not been a magnitude 5 or magnitude 6, or excuse me, a magnitude 5 and above since, since November 7th, 2016. And another one was a little bit earlier, a few months earlier, in September 3rd, 2016, and then in February 2016. Yeah, 2016 was not a good year for Oklahoma, guys. Yeah, not a good year, that is for sure. This is all, ma or excuse me, this is magnitude 5.0 and above since 1960. That is what I set the settings to on the earthquake catalog at USGS.gov. Since 1960, and we see it starts at 2011. So, why has Oklahoma been seeing such? I mean, you know, I could agree how some of these earthquakes could be related to fracking. But they have been doing fracking in Oklahoma for a long, long, long time. But why are we just seeing magnitude 5 and above since 2011? I think that's very, very strange, guys. I think that's very, very odd. So we haven't seen one since 2016. Keep an eye out for magnitude 5 or magnitude 6 in this area for, I'm going to say, the next week at the maximum. Not saying that for sure, guys. But you should be prepared just in case. You never know what may happen. We're going to take a look at some of these earthquakes in the seismic program swarm. I'm going to try to use the closest station to this earthquake right here. Let's, uh, actually, you know what? Let's go to the 3.8. Let's get the closest station to the 3.8, which was a magnitude 4.0. See how many people felt it on the event page here. 70 people reported feeling it. That's not too many. 
I'm not too, too surprised. Uh, I would think there would be more people that would have felt it, but more people did not feel it. We're going to go to Origin. Quick phases. Quick arrival time. DOVR in the O2 network. We're going to take a look at that in the Seismic Program Swarm right now. Here we are in Seismic Station, DOVR in the O2 network, which is the closest seismic station to the magnitude 3.8 in Oklahoma, and is somewhat close to also the other earthquakes that are occurring up to the north, but the main center of seismicity is just to the west of Kingfisher, Oklahoma. Since it's a broadband channel, I'm going to add a 1 hertz high pass filter to the 8th power to get rid of those pesky background microseisms. So you can tell just by looking at the helicorder itself, look at all of these earthquakes, guys. It does not appear to be any foreshock, mainshock, aftershock sequence, it, it, in my opinion. Now, I could be wrong since I'm not a professional. In my opinion, these do look like foreshocks to a larger quake, definitely. But then again, I could be wrong. But we see multiple earthquakes, and look at how long and high the frequencies are. We're going to put the maximum frequency. Remember, you can change the power range, which is the color in the spectrograms if you want. For the spectrogram, we're going to do the maximum, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to do the maximum frequency range of 40 hertz. Same for the spectra plot. And okay, so let's go to the spectrogram, shall we? Right here. Remember, you could always change the color. The color means power. Let's go all the way up to 170 for the power range. Look at that. Color range is power. Now let's go all the way down to 80. Wow, look at that. Looks extremely strong, doesn't it? All right, so we're going to go to 110, the preset filter for it. All right, there we go. So we see this earthquake at 2325, which is supposedly a magnitude here. Let's see what magnitude that was. 2325, I believe that was the 3.4 at the beginning of this list. 2325 is a magnitude 3.2 at 7 kilometers in depth in that location near Kingfisher. And moving on, notice all of these earthquakes. I'm going to use the spectrogram plot for these. Zoom out a little bit. Look at how long the, the coda, the end tail of the earthquake, is lasting. Very, very long. And notice we have more teeny tiny aftershocks afterwards. Very small aftershocks. Probably in the magnitude 1 or the magnitude 2 range. Some other earthquakes. But look at all of them, guys. Look at all of these events. Look at this. This is probably a magnitude 3.0. Again, the tail lasting very long and having very high range frequencies. Again, this is going up to 20, or excuse me, 40 hertz. 25 hertz would be right here, which is the preset margin for spectrograms and swarm. I went up to 40, and you can see how strong the frequencies are all the way up to 40, possibly even beyond. More aftershocks, more aftershocks, or excuse me, four shocks. Here's a strange looking one with some dominant lower frequencies in the S wave, right there. Here's the magnitude 3.8, which originally was a magnitude 4.0. I believe it is a 3.9 or 4.0, but whatever. Just 0.2. You can see how strong it is using the amplitude count on the left, which I kind of rely on more than reported magnitudes. Again, look at how long that tail is, guys. Very, very long. Let's zoom all the way out. The entire earthquake from start to finish. I mean, you probably would have only felt it for maybe 10 seconds max or so. But from start to finish, the earthquake is about, let's see, 548 UTC to about 552. So about four minutes long for a simple magnitude 3.8. Look at that, guys. That is very intriguing for this area in Oklahoma. Notice we see a magnitude, I believe this is a 3.2 right here. Dominant high range frequencies. All of these have high range frequencies. Don't know what they're being caused by in this area, but... In my opinion, this does not look like fracking. Could be, though. You know, fracking does cause earthquakes. That is very true. But just because a fracking area is nearby doesn't mean fracking is the responsibility, right? Going forward, more earthquakes, more earthquakes, more earthquakes, never ending. This one was very odd right here. Don't even know what the heck that was. It looks like an earthquake for sure, but I don't know. Here's the recent magnitude 3.4 near Kingfisher, Oklahoma. So you can see seismicity does continue in this area. I'm putting a warning out there for the next week for magnitude 5, possibly. Maybe a 4.5. I'm going to say probably around a magnitude 5, magnitude 5.5. Maybe even up to magnitude 6. But I don't think magnitude 6 would happen in this area. But just be careful, just in case. And that's it for Oklahoma right now. Here we are at the Steamboat Geyser 2019 uh, event page uh, under Seismic Events. The drop down, the seismic events drop down menu right there, Steamboat Geyser 2019. Um, now I do not.
put out a video every single time Steamboat Geyser erupts. If nothing else is happening really much and I don't have time, I'm not going to put out a video about Steamboat Geyser. However, I do update this page as quick as possible when Steamboat Geyser erupts in the Norris Geyser Basin at Yellowstone. So if you guys want to keep tabs on Steamboat Geyser and see these plots whenever a Steamboat eruption occurs, I put them out as quick as I possibly can when I see an eruption appear on the seismic stations at Yellowstone. Uh, the most recent eruption was the 29th eruption of 2019. And here are the plots right here. Again, the most recent eruption was the 29th eruption of 2019, which is the 61st eruption since it reactivated in early 2018. June, not July, June 2019 broke a record of its own. Steamboat Geyser erupted seven times in June, setting an all-time record for eruptions in one calendar month. Steamboat still seems to be alive and well, and we only need four more eruptions to beat the all-time yearly record of 32 eruptions, which was achieved by Steamboat Geyser in 2018. If Steamboat keeps erupting regularly, we should beat the 2018 record in the next month or so. Stay tuned. We can see this eruption, the amplitude count was particularly strong. I've seen them a little bit stronger than this, but it is one of the stronger eruptions of 2019, that is for sure. Steamboat continues to erupt and is getting very close to beating its all-time record. Oh yes, it's on its way. Only four more eruptions are needed. Let's see if any more quicks occurred while I have been recording. Nothing too crazy, nothing much to mention right now. So keep an eye out for more videos and blog posts and keep an eye on my Steamboat Geyser 2019 page for the coming Steamboat eruptions. Have a great day, guys. Again, I'm updating a lot of my pages on my website, so just be patient. I'm moving some stuff around. Just check stuff out if you want. The how-to menu is going to be a lot better when I'm done with it. So hope you guys have a great day, guys. God bless and see you later.